What's up you guys? Today I'm going to be showing you how I made this distressed wooden American flag. Let's get started. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is get my stripes cut. Uh, I got five one by twos here, and I'm gonna cut seven pieces at 22 and a quarter and six pieces at 37 inches. Uh, when you're picking these things out at the store, uh, do your best to find straight ones, and that'll help you out a lot when you're making your flag. All right, so now that I got these stripes cut, the next thing that I'm gonna do is cut the union. Uh, for the union, I'm gonna be using a piece of this one by 12 here, um, and it's gonna be 14 and three quarter inches long. And then for the height, as you can see, I got a clamp on my top uh, seven stripes right here, all the short ones. And what I'm gonna do is just quickly grab this measurement. So as you can see, I got uh, 10 and an eighth. And the reason I'm measuring those is because these are supposed to be an inch and a half. Uh, so overall, this should be 10 and a half inches. Uh, but sometimes they come a little bit smaller. Um, so that way, if you just measure it, then you will get a union that will line up exactly. So I'm gonna cut uh, a piece of this at 14 and three quarter by 10 and one eighth. All right, now that we got that union cut out, there's just one more thing we gotta cut. And for that, I'll be using this eight foot one by three. And what I'm gonna do is cut four pieces out of this at 18 inches, and then I'll cut two pieces at five inches. All right, so I got these pieces cut, and uh, these pieces are gonna be for my backers. Um, if your stripes are the right size and your flag is 19 and a half inches tall, uh, you could go ahead and cut those at 18 and a half, uh, just so that they'll cover a little bit more. Um, but 18 should be good since my flag is only 19. And now that we got everything cut, uh, the next thing that I'm going to do is go ahead and put the rough edges on all of these. Uh, this is my test piece right here just to kind of give you an idea of what I want it to look like. Uh, so I pretty much just went along the edge and um, gave it a nice rough look. This is another test piece I did, but this one is a little bit more aggressive. Um, and I don't know if it'll just be too much uh, with 13 stripes all like this. So I think I'm just going to kind of... I do something more in the middle that is not too aggressive but has some deeper spots and the way that i get this rough look is uh using my angle grinder and then i got this uh special wheel on here it's a graph speed cutter and it's made for wood and uh pretty much what i do is just uh just pretty much just run it along the edge at an angle um and then you just kind of move it in and out to get that sort of inconsistent depth on there. And when you're using this, I just recommend that you be super careful, go nice and slow, um, hold on to it nice and tight, uh, wear gloves. And if you have one of these handles that screws in right here, I'd recommend you use the handle also just to get a little bit of a better grip on it. But yeah, just be super careful using this uh, just because it is a really powerful tool and um, you are cutting into wood, but uh, I have not had any issues with it. So uh, I think it's fairly safe, but uh, just make sure you're being super careful when you're using it. And uh, I'll go ahead and show you what that looks like. All right, so I got my rough edge on all of these. Uh, the next thing that I'm gonna do is just grab my sander here. Uh, I'll just throw some uh, some fine sandpaper on there. I think I got like 220 on there. Uh, and now I'm just gonna go through and just quickly run it along these edges and just try to get rid of that like that rougher look. Not all of the edges have it. Like as you can see right here, it looks a little bit smoother. Um, but I'm just gonna go through and just try to get um, most of this rough stuff off. It's 
it's fine if there's um, still some left, but um, I'm just gonna go through and get a majority of it off. And then I'll also quickly buzz over the faces. As you can see, I got uh, some crap on this one. I got to sand off. But yeah, so I'm gonna go through and get these sanded. All right, so now that we got those all sanded and then I went ahead and vacuumed them also. Uh, the next thing that I'm gonna do is torch them. So I just got my propane torch here and uh, usually I try to do a little bit of a darker burner on the edges and then go a little bit lighter in the middle. Um, for my sample pieces, I went pretty dark through the whole thing and that gave it a pretty dark red look, which I kind of like. And that's one way to make it, uh, if you want like a much darker look, then you can burn it darker and then it will come out a lot darker than if you just burn it lighter. I'll go ahead and show you how I burn mine, uh, but you can go ahead and get creative with it and burn them however you like. Uh, so I think I'll go ahead and do something like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of these torched. All right, so I just got done torching these. Uh, I actually really like how the torch comes through um, with this rough edge look. Uh, it kind of burns it in a really cool way where it doesn't and I kind of and I don't know if you could tell but I torch it to the side in some parts and then I think that helps to like keep some of this white while burning other parts of it uh, dark so I don't know I just really like the way this this torches I think it gives it a really cool look but next thing that I'm gonna do is get these stained um, so these stains are all water-based wood stain uh, so for my red I got some min wax water-based wood stained and this stuff's tinted in scarlet. Uh, for my blue, I got some Varathane water-based wood stain. Uh, this stuff is tinted in uh, navy blue. As you can see, this stuff's from Home Depot. And for my white, I just got white in the Varathane water-based wood stain. Um, I am gonna try and find one that you can order online just because hopefully that'll make it easier for people who don't have a Lowe's or Home Depot near them and they can't get a hold of the stains. Uh, but anyways, let's get to staining. Um, I'll just be using a rag to stain. And uh, usually I'll do around three coats of the red and three coats of the blue and then three or four coats of the white. We'll see how dark it comes through uh, with this darker burn on here uh, because that will make the stain come through darker. Uh, and then I'll also be staining the tops and the bottoms of these and then I'll be staining the ends um, along with the union as well. All right, so we got these all stained. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and set the stripes aside and we're gonna do the stars. All right, so to do the stars, I'm gonna be using this stencil here. Uh, I can go ahead and link this in the description. 
Um, I'm going to be carving them on this one uh, because I think it will it will just go along with the with the rough edge look. If you'd like to spray paint them, uh, you're free to do that. Uh, it might be a little tricky though with your edges depending on how much you took off. Um, some of the stars might be kind of floating over that. But for carving it, the first thing I'm going to do is just tape it in place on there and then I'm going to take a pencil and get all the stars traced out. And if you are having trouble seeing your stars, you can use a white colored pencil and that will uh, help to make them a little bit more visible. All right, so as you can see, we got these all outlined now. Uh, it's a little bit harder to see them through the camera than it is in person, but uh, now that we got them all traced, the next thing that I'm gonna do is just start carving them uh, so I'll be using my Dremel. I just got a Dremel 3000 and I got a flex shaft on it and I got a little dust blower tip on there and I'll be using my 105 bit to uh, outline the stars and then I'll use the 107 bit uh, to clean out the rest of the middles. The 105 bit is the very small wood carving tip and the 107 one is the biggest one and that one uh, works pretty good to clean out the middles um, fairly quickly. So, so I'm gonna go ahead and start getting these things carved out. All right, I just got done outlining them. Um, that's the one I did with the 105, and I actually switched to a 106 bit because my 105 bit is getting a little uh, burnt out. Um, so that's what it looks like using a 106 bit. So they're still fairly clean and they're still fairly sharp lines, but the 105 just lets you get a little bit um, sharper points. But I think the 106 turns out just fine as well. And now I'm gonna switch to the 107 and get the middles cleaned out. All right, so I finished carving out the stars. And then one more thing that I like to do is um, just take my white stain and then I take one of these fine paint brushes here, uh, just like one of these. And then I go through and just add some stain to each one and then that just helps to give it a whiter look. Uh, and then it just matches the stripes a little bit more. Uh, you don't have to do this if you don't want to, but this is something I like to do. All right, so I got all my stars stained and now we're gonna get this thing all glued and nailed together. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and get it all flipped over onto its face. All right, now I got it all flipped over. Uh, make sure that your union is on the right side now so that when it gets flipped over, it'll be on the left side and then make sure that your stars are all uh, in the right direction. And then now what I'm gonna do is make a mark at an inch and a half and at 13 and a half inches uh, on the top and the bottom and then I'll pull from both sides and then those will be the marks of where um, my backer strips will go. Uh, so one should fall uh, right between this seam right here and then something like this. And then what I'm gonna do is just, just using one of these blocks, I'm just gonna make sure that this is all lined up and then I'll get it clamped just so that all the wood is tight. And then I will uh, lay a bead of glue down on this piece and on the back of the flag. And then I will go ahead and nail it all the way down uh, using an 18 gauge brad nailer and some inch and a quarter nails and I'll just do two nails per stripe and then just kind of spread them out up in here 
at an equal distance. And then obviously on this seam, you wanna nail it on both sides. And then you'll also wanna make sure that uh, these are all pushed up tight against this. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this glued and nailed together. All right, so I got the backers put on. Now I'm gonna quickly put these five inch blocks. Uh, these I'm gonna use for my hangers. And on this left side, I'll just line it up uh, with the bottom of the top stripe. And then over here, I'll just have to measure an inch and a half down and then I'll just butt it up against this right side. All right, while we got it flipped over, I'm gonna quickly throw these hangers on. Uh, I just use these sawtooth hangers and I'll just center them uh, inside these blocks and I'll just put one on either side. All right, so I got my hangers put on. Uh, I just went an inch and a quarter down, made a line, and then I just did uh, uh, three and a half inches over for my first screw and then just my second screw wherever it fell. And now the last thing that we have to do is to just get some sealer on this. Uh, so I'll be using some of this Rust-Oleum uh, Ultra Cover Clear Gloss uh, Spray Sealer. And I'll just put a nice even coat on the front and the back. And then uh, make sure you also spray the sides as well. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this sealed up. That is what it looks like all finished up. I actually really like how this one turned out. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please leave them down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Uh, also, you can check me out on Instagram. I'd love to hear any video recommendations that you guys might have. Thank you guys so much for watching and good luck with your project.